and she would take me over and establish a habit of mine. So, what will go down the west? Um, what will it be in Lana? Yeah. Uh, let's see. And Liz Gray? Action. Don Gosling? Here. Arno Rintila? Here. Um, James Sanders is here. Uh, Summer Sigler, absent. Miss Samantha Tori is absent. And Corn being present, we can conduct the business. Um, so the first item on the agenda is the land acknowledgement. Um, but let me read the preliminary just for the viewing audience and then we'll go on from there. Documents that are public records will be made available for public inspection in the district office located at 1400 Marina Way South, Richmond, 9484, during business hours. In addition, such writings and documents may be posted on the district's website when the agenda is posted. The meeting location is 1400 Marina Way South, Richmond. You can attend the meeting in person. The meetings are also broadcast on the Zoom using the following link. HTTPS forward slash forward slash WCCUSD.zoom.us.i 961146 or by telephone at 669-444-9171 and our web ID is 961-1462-3120. The public will have different opportunities to address the committee. The committee can address the, com the public can address the committee during public comment and before an action or discussion item. The public can provide public comment in person through Zoom app and by telephone. Public comment will last approximately 10 minutes. The time allotted for each speaker is two minutes. If you are attending the meeting, if you are attending the meeting in person, you will need to submit a request to address the board form to indicate your desire to speak during public comment on a non-agenda item before the item begins on the agenda item. If participating via Zoom, you will need to raise your hand by clicking on the appropriate icon in the Zoom app or by pressing star nine if accessing the meeting by phone. No yielding of time or substitution of speaker is permitted. The public will have an opportunity to make public comments on agenda items after the presentation of each discussion and action item. The item allotted for public comment on each action or discussion item and items not discussed on the agenda would be no more than 10 minutes and two minutes per speaker. Due to the Brown Act, committee members cannot discuss items not on the agenda and do not usually respond to items presented in public comment. Special accommodations upon written request to the district, dis disability related modifications or accommodations, including auxiliary aids or services will be provided. Please contact the facilities office at 510-307-4545 at least 48 hours in advance of the meetings. And now back to move on to item A2, which is land acknowledgement. We recognize that we are probably on, presently on the lands of the Chochenyo, Ruikma, Karkin, and Ohlone peoples and acknowledge them as the first inhabitants of the land we currently occupy. Our waiver and recognition, we acknowledge that the burden of environmental exploitation and system, systemic injustice falls upon the labor of black and brown bodies in the building of this country and its institutions. I remember that black and brown people were born and died working this land against their will for generations. I will acknowledge the continuing contribution of the labor of survivors over the centuries today of all immigrant labor, including voluntary, involuntary, traffic, force, and undocumented peoples in the building of what we refer to as the United States. And the author is Dr. Rochelle Rogers Arden. 
And the next item is the approval of the agenda. If there are no objections, the agenda will be approved as presented. Hearing none, the agenda is approved. The approval of the meeting minutes of June 11. So everyone should have a copy. If there are no objections, the minutes will be. I object. For, uh, a standing objection that I, I don't believe in action minutes. I think the minutes should actually have some substance where a person could look at him and have a reasonable expectation of understanding what happened there. But in this particular case, also, there are just too many typos in there. Uh, and also, in, the, in the in the minutes? In the minutes. At least three, probably maybe four. Uh, I, just draw our attention to them. Okay, but maybe can, can, can I finish my sentence first? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, also, I don't believe that we. That, that we should be referred to in a familiar tone, not Don, not Jim. Yeah, you don't do that in a set of official. I address you just now. No. In the minutes, I'm saying oh, the official the document. Okay. Okay. It should be. Yeah. Well, for lack of anything else, you know, Mr. Goss, you know, Mr. Sanders, on there. Uh, but also, the, again, there's just there's not much content in there. There's no seconding of, of any of the motions, uh, identifying who seconded the motion. Uh, so I, I can't support that. Uh, like the group from the parliamentarian, I asked her to take minutes tonight so that I could give her a chance to pick on minutes. So I'm happy to make whatever um, grammar errors or the best ones call them, um, grammar errors or spelling errors that were made. If there are typos, that's we can do that without a vote if you just would like to point them out. Um, to address the issue of seconders who makes those under Robert's rules of order we do not name the seconder ever um we do name the person that makes the motion and i'll be happy to add surnames to everyone for the minutes that's quite easy and the minutes do not reflect again as per Robert's rules of order do not reflect discussion minutes reflect the action so your minutes are correct happy to if someone would like to point out the typos, then I will add surnames. Miss uh, Long, it's also um uh, on the on the A on the meeting minutes. Um, uh, we are missing Liz Gray, so there's okay. a typo where it says five out of six present. So are we? we there are on the first part. Okay, page, page three of twenty-three. So do you see where it says five out of six present form is met? But we are not six, we are seven. We are seven. We'll correct that. So, and we were uh, still absent with Liz on the last meeting. Okay, so in the blank line, please add Liz Gray's yeah. name and indicate that she is absent. Correct. On the line underneath, please cross out six and put in seven. Uh, so we'll have with five out of seven present on this map. Um, and surnames will be added. I have the minutes left, so surnames are added to everybody. Oh, uh, okay. Is there any other errors? Mr. Garcia? Yeah. Your your additions? Okay. Question. What? I, I, I don't think she's finished. Yeah, so I have a question in regards to the minutes. I know that we keep saying that these minutes are approvable, but I think we haven't been able to reach a core, you know, a constant like what you know, what do we want in the minutes? So if things need to be added, if we as a committee decide that these minutes aren't enough and we want more context to them, uh, could that be something that be then added, or are we just gonna keep not approving these minutes because there's not enough context behind them. So, as you've heard me recommend before, adopt what we have. We can always go back and add to or change minutes. And and I I agree that that's your that's what you're recommending. But I think at this point we haven't been able to get enough substance to where anyone's wanting to approve these minutes. So for future reference, can we add that and then bring it back to this committee to then be approved? 
because we're not having sufficient votes to, I, I don't see yeah. that at any meeting we've had sufficient votes to approve any of these minutes. Um, so here's, if I may speak really, here's the problem with that is minutes are not transcripts. So if you want what you say in the minutes, you actually have to make a motion and then you're probably going to have to repeat it because the secretary or whoever's speaking minutes is not taking a transcript, period. That's not what minutes are. If you want a transcript, we can hire someone to do that. So if you want something added, then let's make a motion to add this because, well, I know we have those on the board that disagree with what they're calling action minutes or with just minutes that have motions in them. Your minutes are correct. So if you want more in them, let's make a motion with what information you have you want in them. A lot of times it's the information like on the properties and all of that, that is included as part of the packet. And now can I make another recommendation? Sure. So because we've had, I think Samantha's been absent and she's the secretary, she's the one that's supposed to be taking notes. We've had you filling in to take notes. And I think the one that's had more say into what we want in these notes has been Don. Is there any form that maybe Don can put himself in and say, I will take notes. And then that way we could get something approved by next meeting. Or do you have to be the one that no, sits I, for no. movement's sake? So if Don sits there and says, I want, and then we know whatever he's going to put in his notes is going to be what we're going to be able to come in and approve because they're going to have a substance behind it. Is that something that, I mean, I'm just trying to no, throw I, things out there that we're going to, you know, be able to move and not just sit here and, you know, five meetings later, we're not approving any minutes. Bert, yeah, I'm just wondering uh, in the interim until uh, Samantha comes back, is if that's uh, if that's appropriate with Don, if he feels that uh, he's willing to do that, or would that be something that we could do? I personally, um, you know, I I'm not in favor of a transcription or anything that approaches it because we have so many meetings and if we want to go back and, th and there have been transcriptions in the past that have been published when I think about the earlier iteration of the committee and one time um, the subject of which we're dealing with tonight the draft report simply had um, transcriptions attached to it instead of a, a concise statement of what actions are actually taken and it, it burdens it burdens the reader and eventually the what we do is going to be distilled into a report and if we attach volume after volume of transcriptions it's not going to get read so i i you know i'm i'm in favor of brief if possible um this time um as i've already agreed to do the minutes for this meeting I did do the minutes for the last meeting. You know, as a compromise, if you want to look at and ask Mr. Gosney if he would like to take minutes or notes and we can compare them at the next meeting. Well, that's what I'm saying, something where we can merge. I mean, you do have, uh, I don't know if anyone, you have the recording. recording. You have the recording. The recording is always on the minute. So if someone wants to see or hear the discussion, it is available. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, because it seems that we're not finding and we're spending so much time on, you know, the little things that is like we need to find a mid ground where it's not too right. less or too much. And how can we merge these two things together to now be able to just, okay. you know, whether it be adding last names, whether it be, you know, giving a little bit more context than just one liners, I think. So, you know, moving forward, let's just. Hold on just a second. Wait to be recognized. Don's had his hand up for them. Okay. First I'm off. Sorry, Mr. Gosney. You don't have to say Mr. Gosney. We we can be clear here is just in the official minutes that'll be read decades from now. Uh on it, because somebody may not know who Don is. Okay. But first off, with the exception of the Citizens Bond Oversight Committee, every committee in 
the WCCUSD does not use Robert Schulz's order. They use Rosenberg's. Okay, so we can't keep saying, we, I brought this up in our very first meeting on March 5th. Which do we go with? So we'll settle that out later. Well, we're at six meetings now, and we still haven't settled it. But this is, the, the rest of the school district does use Rosenberg's. The rules are different on that. But so, second thing is, I have never, you've never heard me suggest that we go with transcripts. Everybody likes to say that when you want to say, well, we don't want the bare bones. Well, we're not, we can't have transcripts. Well, there is a middle ground in there, a big, big middle ground in there. I said, I know you, I, I offered up the transcript of a particular report from our legal attorney, from Orbach, uh, and, uh, you know, as, a, as a, an educational tool, because it was also sent out to the public and it was sent out to the school board. It was very uh, educational, along with the, the video and the slides on that. Was it the, it, it was a, it, it was decided to put it into the minutes as an attachment, but it wasn't part of the minutes itself. It wasn't it, it take take the replace of the minutes. Nobody's suggesting going with transcripts, yes, but you go you go with more than what we've been, been getting with just the basic action minutes. As I as I disagree with with that kind of minutes where there's no substance there, there's no there there. I understand. Again, Mr. Chair, we keep saying more substance. We're not getting examples of what more substance is. Without that, there's nothing to add to the minutes. And if you, as we go, as I've said, if you want something added to the minutes, make a motion to add it to the minutes, and I'm happy. As long as the board agrees, that would be an addition to the minutes. There's zero problem with that. However, at this point, I would recommend that we adopt the minutes as amended with the Attendance and adding all surname. And if we wish to come back to them, we can absolutely come back to them. But well, we would certainly need suggestions of what substance is. Mr. Gosney, is it appropriate or acceptable to you to approve the minutes as submitted with the proviso that you will submit um, in addition to the incorporated in the body of the minutes for the meeting of June 11th? No, not like that. Uh, I said, I believe you you approve minutes that you're able to see and read right now, not not with changing them at a later date and time. Uh, so saying, uh, we want to write minutes by committee. That doesn't work. It just doesn't work like that. You have one person that draft the minutes. And you don't you don't have somebody that wants to go item by item by item, adding in a a phrase or or a sentence. Yeah, that's going to drag the meeting on forever and ever. I'm I'm sorry. I'm. I feel like I'm misunderstanding your points because I think that's what you're suggesting. Now you lost me. I think you're suggesting when you raise your issues about item by item, I, that's how I understood your objections. I'm saying uh, my suggestion is that they'd be drafted, that the minutes be drafted in the first place with content in there. Not, not so that you add, and because and, and, each item would require the, uh, a separate motion and approval by the by the group on here, instead of having a uh, a set of minutes that is more inclusive to begin with. And what criteria will be applied to judge how much content is sufficient? Well, as I as I mentioned many times, so if a person were to pick up these minutes, they'd have a reasonable expectation of understanding what happened at the meeting without having to sit through a two-hour video. Is that the people don't want to sit through a two hour video is when they, they can read the five minutes out of minutes. Um, I'm not sure if, if we yeah, could as, ask as we what part as you look at this. Yeah. As, as you look at this, um and this action is taken by the committee. What would be missing? What's missing? Well, the content of the discussions. When I know she says, well, no, we don't need that. You can watch the video. I don't. I don't agree with that. Well, I guess you, you don't. There's a reason that we carry these rules so that when we have these kind of disagreements, we have to fall back to the rule. And the, the rule is we don't include discussion, and that doesn't matter whether it's Rosenberg and it doesn't matter whether it's Robert's Rules of Order in the minutes and for Brown Act, we include the action, we include the votes, and identify every individual's vote. I'm having a hard time seeing what would be considered content that is missing 
out of here that would not be discussion and that would not be opinion, both of which would not be, or second, all of which would not be included in minutes. We have a difference of opinion what should be in the minutes and what could be in the minutes. It's subjective. I have the rules. And I'm happy to send you the citations for those if that would help. I believe we've done that before during the training. Mr. Ghazi, I have one, two, three, four, five instances where your first name is used, not your full name or your surname. Do you, if those were changed to reflect your full name, would these minutes be acceptable to you? No, again, I will not accept what were considered action minutes. Okay. Okay. So I'd like, since there's an objection, and I guess, Ms. Alwani, you also object, is that correct? Well, like I said, I think for me, it would be maybe making a motion because that's what we are hearing Ms. Dunning recommend making a motion to add, you know, the last name and who second the item. And those are, the second is not, okay, but the other two items, the correcting this and the typos are automatic. We don't need, you don't need a motion for it. Okay. So you just said in order to add a second or something that we need to make a motion. So, so, okay. What is something that you can add to this without us having to make a motion that Don is recommending? So, two separate things. And I'm sorry I interrupted you. I just wanted you to know that the changes with adding the surnames and the correction on the mistake with the attendance, those are automatic and we can make those without a motion. So, already done that. As far as if you want to add whoever seconds it, you can make a motion that we add the name of the seconder. You'd have to make it at every single meeting. So, if you want to do that, we can do that. We... So, it has to be then added to every single meeting per the Roberts rule? Unless you want to adopt it in your bylaws. Yeah, that's a problem. Start, so, yeah. I hear your frustration. I do. As a parliamentary, all I can do is recommend you what the rules are. Can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. Ideally, the minutes would be approved at the subsequent meeting. We're clearly four or five, apparently six meetings behind. The level of detail in minutes is, I'll call it subjective, only because I've seen hundreds of minutes that are very, very brief. Hundreds of minutes are paragraphs long, more than they need to be. As Mr. Gosney said, something in the middle is probably what we're shooting at. I don't think there's anything stopping a board member, not tonight here at the meeting, because it would have to take a formal process to perhaps make recommendations on one of those sets of meetings. If I were to write these, we would add this, 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 and this. I'm not assigning you homework, but I'm suggesting that if we were to expand on the minutes descriptions, far short of a transcript, but being clear on what you're suggesting, not on all six, unless you really feel like doing it, but maybe making suggestions on one, providing that as a document to the chair that could then be viewed as an, an, an agenda item at the next meeting. It's not going to happen tonight because it sounds like there's too much that may be a moving target. It's not a quick action and a vote on it. It would actually have to be something to look at that would demonstrate what that additional information is. So that's a suggestion. Again, not assigning homework, but I'm just making the suggestion for you. Well, I, I, all of this begs uh, the question, too, is no disrespect, but uh, we don't have a secretary. Is that really the parliamentarian's job? Her, I thought her job was specifically just to be parliamentarian. So um, I asked her to take minutes for tonight. I asked her to take minutes at the last meeting because of the absence of some editorials. So under our training, as part of being a parliamentarian, yes, we are professional minute takers, we're professional chairs, we're professional lecturers. So yes, it is 
it would certainly be something um, that I'm not unfamiliar with, obviously, and would be part of my, if asked. My point is, uh, would it be prudent to have ask Don if he's willing to take the minutes if it's if, it, if it's an issue for him, and uh, and you guys can uh, commingle your notes. Um, my minutes go right to the chair and to the <clears throat> to Melissa. So again, I'm I, I was already asked to take minutes tonight. I'm taking minutes tonight. Certainly, if someone else, Don or anyone else, would also like to take minutes, again, send those to the chair and send those to Melissa, and they could both be reviewed, even merged. Just looking meeting. for a compromise. Yeah. I agree. Mr. I agree. One other thing that uh, on the existing minutes we got, we got. You don't list the names of the commenters or what they co commented on. We had quite a number of commenters last at the last meeting. I suggest comments were received, and there's no substance there. I think that it's important for the, for people to be able to read minutes and say, "Hey, they brought this up. They brought that up." Uh, not just a, a comment was made or a series of comments were made anonymously without substance. I don't think Chris, he could include that in his. Otherwise, no, it does not get into the discussion. Um, Ms. Gray? Ms. Gray. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I did want to echo what our. Yeah, my name's not in front of you. It's not in front of you. <laughs> the gentleman in front of me brought up. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, and, and maybe Don, um, Mr. Gosney can, you know, take some notes and give examples, I think, for our next meeting so that we can, you know, merge of a little bit more of what context needs to be in these minutes before we bring this up, this item up for approval again, because we are not going to approve these and we are spending too much time, I think, every meeting on minutes because, you know, we are far from meeting in the middle. And I think if you may take that, Mr. Gosney, and send over another example because I know you you sent items in before to be put into our minutes and I think you know we have to come to a, well an agreement consensus on you know what our minutes are supposed to hold and I do know that there's rules but I also think that this um, committee has the opportunity to also ask and put into you know minutes that we are going to honor and we're going to hold them forward with. So it might not be you know exactly what you're saying needs to be in. It might not be, but I think there needs to be some you know clear examples of you know what we can all move forward to be I okay with. I'd like to add one comment before I uh, recognize Mr. Gosling and then Ms. Dunn. Um, when we started, uh, Ms. Torres submitted minutes that were closer to um, a transcript than, than not. And at that time, Mr. Gosney raised, sent me uh, an email listing in, in highlight form errors, mistakes, omissions, additions that should be made to the minutes. And he suggested they be returned to the author of the minutes to be rewritten. Um, and I don't know how well that was received by Ms. Torres because she's not here. This has been a bone of contention for some time. And, you know, we were on the far side of content initially, and now we're on the lean side of content. So um, your point about a compromise, sure. But at the same time, you know, somebody has got to be satisfied, and and I can almost bet that there'll be dissatisfaction with whatever we do. Mr. Gosney, your turn. Just for people of edification here, this is our 11th meeting of this committee. We don't have a single set of approved minutes yet. I know. You know, in our first five meetings, we didn't even have minutes that were provided. We had on the agenda, the agenda is we had approved the minutes, but we were never provided minutes to approve because we didn't have anybody recording anything. Which meeting 
refresh my recollection. Which meeting did you issue your email that you sent to me? After after and, the March the sequence of the eleven. After the March fifth, that would be meeting number number six. And I think we had three sets of minutes at, at that time. And so my comments were on those those sets of minutes, those three sets of minutes at that time. Because yeah. we didn't we did not get those minutes at the very next meeting. We got them a couple months later. Okay. Again, I'm happy to incorporate in the minutes or whoever is taking your minutes this content that we speak of. Except there's got to be a definition of content. Does that make sense? Otherwise, we wind up with a transcript. We don't take transcript minutes. So if there's a way to work that out, and you guys have suggestions for that, absolutely happy to hear it. But we're not there. And without that direction, all we can give you are the minutes that we have, which are Correct and now corrected along with the link so that anyone who wants to watch the minutes and hear all the discussion is welcome to do so. But, Mr. Chair, this, you yeah. know, without a definition of content, without that adopted, and if Mr. Gosney does not want to take notes and submit what he thinks would like to be approved and or any other board member. Or, or. We're not making headway. I know. Okay. And that's my point. Yeah, we need to make headway. So, Mr. Gosney, are you willing to take additional notes and submit them to be incorporated into the minutes? To be commingled? <laughs> I mean, it, that, I, that sounds like minutes that's, by committee. That sounds that's you're, you're using commingled, which I think of in an accounting sense of those mixing funds. Is that is that here? <laughs> what do you want to do, Mr. Gosson? You can you can select anybody you want to to take the minutes. Okay, I said I stand stand firm and and unwilling to accept action minutes with bare bones material in there. Uh, I said I and I I'm not going to take my notes and have them incorporated into somebody else's notes. Uh, even for the third person to, to combine them, that's just not something that I'm willing to do. Um, okay, I, I asked you what you wanted to do, and you told me what you did not want to do. What is it that you want to do? I want you to hear what these people have to say. Okay, good. Okay, good. Uh, both their hands shot up. And then that's all you want. Um, as a compromise. Again, I'm happy to take minutes and Guadalupe, if you would like to take notes as well, and then yeah. I'd be happy to meet with you. Okay. I just have a recommendation because sure. we're not getting notes. So can we and make sure that every minutes moving forward has last name for members yes. who are seconding, who seconds the item, regardless of, and like I said, we can make a motion every meeting if that's what it's going to take to so, add that to our minutes. And can we have a brief description of anybody commenting on what they commented? When I'm it, gonna need more than that. Well, you I would I, have to, under Roberts, you would have to make the motion at that time. But let's take your suggestions one at a time. Um, your first one, last names, yes, automatic. Uh -huh. Second one, um, so are you making a motion to add the name of the seconder and the second okay let me write that down because then that's a motion that will need a second motion and is yeah, there a second okay so that i'm just trying to give it yes. a just state a simple motion yeah. and see if it can i make a motion to add it's, you just say i move okay i move and i don't even know what i'm moving now you're moving to <laughs> add the name of the second i move to add the uh, the name of the seconder to each item. Approved. Motion. Motion. Okay. And you, did you also want to include uh, one at a time? That's yeah, a whole separate. Yeah, to do one at a time. Okay. We just so just the motion. If you're going to amend the motion, I'm asking something. her if she wants to. I, just hang on, Don. I'm still running the meeting. Yes, you are, sir. Thank you. Is there a second? 
Yeah, I'll go ahead and second. Okay. Um, so it's been moved and seconded that we add the name of the seconder to the minutes with respect to each motion. I heard her also say last names. That's separate automatic. motion. Is we already automatic? said that's automatic if it's it, it's really a grammar typo kind of thing. And if that's what you'd like, not a problem. Well, I'm sorry. I did, when she said I want to make a motion, I heard that that you're telling her what's not in her motion. That's why that's why I had the confusion. That's why I thought you could add a third item on there as well if she wanted to, but Jim's running me. Thank you. So with this motion, we can if there are no objections, the motion is adopted. Okay. Now I'm going to make a motion to add a brief line on. How can I? And see, that's subject to interpretation of what we want. So exactly. And, 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 and that's why I say that I think we need a little bit more context. It doesn't have to be a paragraph. But when we had the speakers last week, and we could say, you know, we had speakers speaking on this item, not a speaker. So we had, you know, blank speaking on this item. I think that would kind of just one minor brief description what people kind of talk about, how many people talked about it, like under what. I can do that without more context. And otherwise, we. Who's deciding what's transcript and what's not? And that, so that's that's a difficult thing. If you want to give me an example of that, I and, I, and that's why I go back to like we have to move this forward. So and you're and and I'm, it's like it's like Arlo said, no disrespect. In your mind, it's you know brief what has to be in there and you know directly you know what doesn't have to be in there. But then we have someone else on the other side saying we need more context. So if you're taking notes this meeting, okay. you're gonna add whatever you want to these minutes. So if next meeting would decide that we want Don to take minutes, and I think there's more context to that than maybe necessary, you know, it's 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 gonna be still either, you know, it's it depends on who's taking minutes. And I think that's where we're given minutes. I just need an example. And I'm giving you the committee but can you understand that that's really subjective and what i need so, what would so be as subjective? we as we go if you say you know what can we get that put in the minutes well, well that's what then, i'm asking like i, I, I kind of you're, you're, you're asking me to decide no and i give it well and that's going to be subjective huh. because no matter what there's always going to be items that maybe we have somebody coming in here and commenting about that's gonna have you know, you, I mean, I just want to read descriptions. Like you said, you're, you're not able to give us that. I am and able to give that to you if you act, tell me what it is you would like included. Let's do this. We're okay, going so to get down to public all the, okay, comment. Okay, we just not approve these minutes. Okay, I want to make a motion not to approve any minutes this meeting for, say, bringing it back to the committee next week. I'll, I'll, I'll go home and go review through these all these minutes myself and then give you some kind of context, send you an email. Melissa and say this is what I think should be added and then let's see if it gets added by next meeting and then we can add and if Don wants to do the same or Art Arda wants to do the same then you know we'll move forward because I think we're not getting anywhere with this because you need a little bit more context that I'm not able to give you at this meeting but I'm and trying to it's tell not, you how I need that well that's what I'm so saying it's that not during this meeting well it's Literally not going to happen because happen. I'm trying to explain it to you and it's not getting through so I think the best thing I might have to do is go home and then Make a line item, look through these minutes, and say this is what I want added, or this is what I think should be added, and then email it to you so you have more of an idea of what, what I'm talking about. Because I think you're not, you know, we're not meeting. I, I, I think we're spending too much time, 45 minutes to be exact, on minutes. I'll go so ahead and second motion. If we could just, there were, there I did make a motion to not, okay, so I make a motion to postpone the minutes um, till next meeting. So the motion is to postpone approval of the minutes until the next meeting in the committee. And is that simply okay? Yeah, simple as that. And Art, you seconded it? I, yes. Okay. Without objection? If there are no objections, the motion passes. So the meetings, the uh, minutes will be submitted, resubmitted for approval of the next meeting. Okay. Um, moving on. Yes, I know. 
Um, the, the next item is item A5, which is the future meeting uh, and the suggested date is July 16. So would you please consent your calendars? Um, let me know whether that meeting date is acceptable or not. It's fine by me. Mr. Gossi? Yes, it's fine by me. Yes, I'm on. I'll check it out. That's fine by me. I concur. Okay. Our gracious city council, Richmond City Council has decided to cancel all their July meetings along with their August meetings. So my, my conflicts are freed up. So the uh, next scheduled meeting will be July 16. And now comes public comment. Do we have any, any online or raising your hands for public comment? We don't have any hands raised at this time. And there's no public comment. So the next item is the discussion item. Oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. I, I don't have a form, so. That's okay. Would you like to address the committee? Oh, we can do it next time. Or we could do it. This is a good time to address the committee. Okay. All right. Um, I didn't find the form that I said, okay? Yeah. Oh, hello, everybody again. Uh, I'm May Coleman, and I'm representing the uh, Contra Costa UC Master Garden Program. And um, we are starting a new garden that's been a few years, actually. Uh, 2022 was when we started the a demonstration garden in um in a portola school in the Latin site where it used to be the Portola School District. And um again I just wanted to say hello again and uh, make our program known to what we actually are doing. And we've been working with many other schools in this school district. We go there and we give talks and we teach children, teachers, and parents how to garden and how to use techniques. And um, this garden specifically is a place where we do a lot of experimentation mm -hmm. with water conservancy, with um, and other issues that are to come with the problem that we're going to face the future problems we're going to face with global warming, including how to plant a fire-wise garden, how to prevent your home to be dropped by by home insurance because it's a, too much risk of fire, which has been happening already. And we work along with other institutions, including East Bay Mud, that give us a lot of foundation um, on how to do that. We teach the community and how to revert their gardens to a form where it uh, will use less water and also be safe. And obviously, because we are UC Master Gardeners, our, our mission is to bring back natural ecological system and um, embrace um, only science-based. Obviously, we can't, we don't, teach anything that is a science-based and approved by the University of California Extension. Um, we wanted to pass that mission ahead and that site is very important to us. Um, if we do have approval to stay there for a longer term, we can actually add buildings in which we will welcome any school to come and have classes with us and a place where we can have um, in conjunction of many um, school um, activities going on and on a regular basis. We do have education for the public 
uh, not only for the schools that we work with, but also in the other gardens that we have that establish already in Wally Creek. We have weekly classes and the Ask a Master Garden Table where we help the community surrounding to um, resolve their garden and horticultural issues. How to keep it healthy, how to keep our community healthy, and also to prevent um, very serious disease that can decimate a whole economy of a state like Florida um, that had used to be the the orange state and all days can't produce oranges anymore because of this kind of problems. I didn't know that. Yeah, so it's it's a our program is much wider than just a garden. Uh, we engage often. I go to that garden often, and I I always have somebody that lives in the community, and they come and they ask, well, "What are you guys doing?" And they get excited about it. They want to come and to help, and we tell them, "Well." Only the master gardeners are allowed to work at the garden, but we wanted to open doors for the community as well. And to serve not only the community, but also all, we also already work and we would like to work if we even larger in an even larger scale with the youth school in the five district. Thank you. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. President. Chair, sure. <laughs> Mr. Chair, uh, is uh, are we at the point where uh, we would uh, make a motion to ask that uh, we have her name read into the record uh, for the minutes and uh, the topic of her discussion and a brief summary of her discussion as an example? Yeah. I am. Uh, I, I have a question for you, and um, and. Uh, listen, Juana, I understand you're running for school board. Are you aware, does the school board in their list, they have the public comment all the time, do they represent in writing the in their minutes the comments that are made in the jury public comment? At least in the But they also offer transcripts, right? Mm -hmm. We don't have transcripts. And we would need to know that from minutes before someone started so that we could take notes on that if they wanted. This is mm -hmm. um, I need a area. form for um, in May. Here's the other problem that we have under the Brown Act, we absolutely may not ask anyone to register or give us their name. And those forms should all say, and I believe they do because Melissa is absolutely fabulous with this, that the information is voluntary. Mm -hmm. So if the board wants to demand someone to register or give us their name, that's kind of a problem. Okay. No, I'm, I am glad to. And I, and I think since we brought that up, um, well, I, I, I can add it. I'm doing the minutes, so if you want, I, as you suggested, I'll put in the name and the topic of the UC Master Gardeners of Contra Costa County for the school site. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the thing. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Gossing, you raised your hand. Yeah, you know, just on something Ms. Dunning said, that, uh, there's a big difference between asking for the person's name and requiring the person's name. Or the district is allowed to ask. They can right? demand. Yeah. yeah. So the district is allowed to ask. Yes, they and that's what, they, that's what they do. But, but it, it, and yet we just demanded and said we need the form filled out. That's uh, a demand, sir. I'm sorry, I didn't hear us. He made a demand. Yeah. I asked, asked for it. Well, the only... If I can defend my question, the only reason I asked for it is because my ears didn't catch everything you know, when the public commenter gave us her name. I understand. And uh, I got May, M A Y, and it's spelled M A I Y T T H. Nobody can pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so that's why I asked, and, and I suppose. Since I'm the chair, that becomes a demand. But that's why I asked. Um, and I didn't catch the last thing, but I did take notes. So, anyway, what now we've dispensed with public comment. And um, 
Was there a, a motion to uh, include I, her name in the contest in the minutes? I should have been done and uh, yeah. so sorry, all done. What, what are you doing? Me? Yes, sir. For my notes, I was getting the proper spelling of her name. Uh -huh. um, is that allowed? It would be pleasant to just sort of ask before you come into the space here and start to do something. It's the matter of respect. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to move on to our discussion item, which is the draft report for the um, committee. And it's attached to your packet. So if you return to that, please. And we have it brought up on the screen. Thank you. So there's a, we're looking at the title page. Okay. Before we begin, because again, I, I want to do these minutes as you guys want. And I really appreciate that you, how you brought that up as an example. That is exactly what we need as far as context. As we go through this, if you have a suggestion, because is a discussion only, so we won't have any motions during this time. But if you have a suggestion and you want that included in the minutes, let me know as it happens, not like at the end, because otherwise I don't track them. So that would be incredibly helpful. Very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, so what page are you on? No. Final page. Six of 23. Okay. In the packet, yeah. So <clears throat> the um, adoption date um, will either be July 16th or uh, a later date, depending on where we are. And the board consideration date will be after we. Um, that had the public hearings. So those things will be incorporated and that's to be determined. Sorry, Mr. Well, Austin. Clarification. Are you expecting that this will be adopted before we even talk to the public? But we have to um, draft the report and then present the report for public comment. Now, what sequence does that suggest to you? Isn't it, sorry, isn't it Submitted to the public at the, uh, for public comment at the school board meeting where it's where they're reviewing yeah, it. We have to have meetings in the community before we submit it to the board. Well, I understand that, but you're you're suggesting that we might approve this on July 16th, which is, would likely be before we even talk to the public, get their input. So, can I clarify? Um, my understanding is that. Um, when the committee approves the draft report, then we will do the public noticings for the public hearings. And so that will be run in the newspaper in addition to other outreach. So we'll agree on the public hearing date and location. And in the public notice that we'll send out to the newspaper, it'll not only identify that, but it'll also identify where the draft report approved by this committee is located like on the web so that people can review the draft report of the committee before they come to the public hearing. And so that's typically what we do for public hearings is it's a draft report that goes then to the public hearings. And that's where we invite the community to come and you're able to hear from the community regarding the draft report. At the conclusion of the public hearings, then the committee would approve what would be the final report for the board's consideration. The final report would then go to the board meeting for their review and consideration. Any questions? Mr. Gossin, any questions? No question, I disagree with that, that timetable though. I still think believe that we should have the input from the community before, uh, wait, you finished my sentence long. No, go ahead. That we should have, have the input from the community before we, we come up with a draft report. Uh, because 
I don't believe that people will be looking for or even noticing that the draft report that they saw before these meetings is the same draft report or a different draft report that will be submitted to the school board. Just, it doesn't usually work that way. Because I, I doubt that we're going to have in the public notice and, uh, and after the fact, be a big, bold headline saying, not the same report. Um, Mr. Gosney, would it be sufficient if the footnotes of the report included the date of the draft so that each sub, um, revision would be identified? Well, I think that should be a, a no-brainer to begin with. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it, 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 typical drawings, I mean, you, you have a revision number. I, I'm quite aware of that. Yeah. So would that satisfy you? No, no. I, again, I, I believe that we should have input from the public before we even if I, try to approve something. If, if I heard Ms. Payne correctly, the draft report would be made available to the public. We would hear from the public. We would incorporate their comments into the final report, which we would adopt, and then forward the final report to the board. Um, what part of community input is not included in that? I'm not saying it's not included. I'm saying that the, the public, are, I don't believe that the public is going to be looking for a subsequent revision of that report. And, and I, I think, I just think that it, the, the draft report should be inclusive of the public thoughts. Well, now you're placing yourself in the, in the, in the mind of the public who are not here. And I think what they will public. consider and won't consider. I'm sorry. Did you ask a question? I, my my question is point to you is that you're assuming the role of the public and you're speaking for the public and you and you're placing and you're saying what they will consider and won't consider and I can and I submit to you that perhaps that's a little um, a little presumptive. You just we need to go out and get public. People's input, and we need to incorporate their input into the report. What is wrong with that? I'm not saying that not to. It's just timing that, I, I, and I believe I, I am a member of the public, and I believe we were appointed as representatives of the public. Okay, so we're not we, we're not an independent contractor. We're not brought, brought in from outside the area. Uh, every one of us has our own little group of people that we we talk to, some lot wider than others. So. Uh, I'm not presuming to speak for the public because I don't haven't spoken to all of the public, but I know I've spoken to a lot of the public uh, and I've gotten their input. But I still believe that that uh, that before we have a finalized draft, that it should we should get the input from the public beforehand. That's just my own personal That's belief. What was just described? No, no. You want to have a you want to approve this on before we go to the public and then amend it after the fact. I'm sorry. Can I? I? Sorry. I believe the misunderstanding here, Mr. Chair, is that um, it was not clear that what would be approving at the next meeting would be the draft um, version. And the final version would be approved after the public comment, if I'm hearing you correctly. All right. I, I understand what's going on. Hang on, Ms. Payne. What I wanted to share was um, all of our committee meetings or Brown Act meetings, everyone is welcome to come. They're welcome to join via Zoom or they're welcome to join here in person. One of the things that we've done is we've had certain committee meetings that have brought in additional outside participation. Um, for example, when the site walks were done at Adams, there were people who attended that and we said, hey, do you want to be included on our distribution list whenever we have a meeting? Um, as we've had other people that have come and joined us, we've always said, hey, do you want us to send you an email every time there's a meeting? And so as committee members um, and our board also receives for all of our committees, there's that email that you guys see that goes out that says, hey, we have an upcoming meeting. Here's our agenda. Here's our packet. We'd love to have you come. At the public hearings, we'll also extend that. So 
if people want to continue to follow the committee and they want to continue to have opportunities um, for public comment or to continue to follow the draft report as it goes to the board, we'll happily add them to our distribution to make sure that they always have the most information about what the committee is doing and, and invite them to all of those meetings through their email if they would like. So I just wanted to share that as another lens and avenue for public input. We know by statute that these public hearings, they're required. And so we need to do that. I think that there have been some opportunities for public participation in the meetings as different people have come in and shared additional perspectives and that our outreach through the legal noticings and through extended outreach that we're gonna do for the public hearings might cast a wider net and bring more people in. But that's why we have to have a draft report that we make available to them so that they have the opportunity to review the materials and bring their feedback, I think, specifically in regards to motions approved by the committee about deeming a property surplus and recommending, you know, uh, priority high best use. And so those are the kinds of things that we want to make sure that the public has a chance to see and read and come and provide feedback to this committee before this committee approves a final report for the board. So I believe that's the intention and requirement of statute with the public hearings. And I just wanted to add that additional lens of the support that we want to continue to provide to anybody who wants to join us here at these committee meetings. What I'd like to do is to go through the draft report as assembled and part of the packet and receive comments um, about what's there and what isn't there. So would you please turn to um, the next page after the title page, which is the board of trustees and the list of the seven or committee members. And is there anything that you think should be there or not there? Mr. Gosling. I believe that all the names of all committee members sh should be included on there, not just the ones that are on here right now. Uh, and you might want to put in the, the date that they started, the date that they finished, if it might provide more information. Okay. But to ignore the, the work of the, the many people that did it before March 5th, that's a little disrespectful. Make that in motion? No, no we're no, no, we're just okay. add, so, so, as I said, I'm taking okay. yeah. so we're so, just gonna add so that. that yeah, and that's that's well taken. And if I could share on page 11 yes. of 23 in the report there is um, a description about the membership that talks about the evolution of the committee and does include all of the names of the people and the specific board of education meetings where it was originally approved what the membership was then the reduction of the committee based on participation. And then as most recent as the action taken in January of this year. Um, and so I just wanted to identify that um, there is a section of the report that does include some of that information. But the voting committee membership for this draft report is who's identified on that page. So, um, so Mr. Gosney, if we just added a a footnote to see page 11, 23 for the earlier composition of the committee. I, I disagree. You got plenty of room on that page. You can you can put all their names on there. Because asking people to go to a different part of the report to see a different information than what they're seeing here. Okay. In my opinion, that's not the proper way to do it. Okay. So perhaps we can show the duration of the term of the first iteration. Of the committee from um, January 26, 2022 mm -hmm. until, um, let's see, 20, February 28, 2023. Is that? So, January 24, 2024 was when the current membership was approved by the board. I three, you could just add it as active membership yeah. and then prior membership. Okay. And then let's just list their names underneath them. 
Right. As opposed to just some of the, the people that were removed, they were still on there well past February of last year. It was, I mean, we couldn't get a quorum, but they were still on there until the beginning of this year. Right. So if we can just say current membership yeah. and then past membership, then you don't have to worry about the dates that tied to that. Then it's referenced in the report. Okay. Moving on, page eight of 23. Um, just simply a listing of everyone that's supporting it. And again, any additions or deletions? I'm just correcting my title. Would you like registered parliamentarian? Professional registered parliamentarian. Very good. Any other changes? Okay. Um, then page nine of 23. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in my notes, I have a note about inserting the description of the legal process for school surplus property disposition. Section four. Section four. So it's covered under responsibilities of the committee? I think it just needs to be inserted into the table of contents. Okay. And responsibilities adjusted to five. Okay. So um, I passed out the um, Cupertino uh, Unified School District report. And that language was in their report, and I felt that it was um, appropriate and necessary to add it. So if you guys have the Cupertino Union School District report that I distributed earlier, if you'll just look for um, description of the legal process for school surplus property disposition, that's the language that I would like to have included. In the report. Can you repeat that? It's in the um, Cupertino Union School District report mm -hmm. is language entitled Description of the Legal Process for um, Surplus School Property Disposition. And I'm asking that that be included in the report. The only uh, recommendation that I would make is based on some newer statute, there are some potential exceptions to how this is written. And so our recommendation would be to have legal counsel review and just if there were any further clarifications about this paragraph that we asked them to provide those edits to bring forward to the committee. Yes. <laughs> Seems I'd like to ask Bill to read the paragraph okay. and provide yeah. some notes if that's okay. Yeah, well, that's, that's fine. <laughs> I won't change all that. Just a little. No, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. Anything else on um, page nine of 23? I just have a, a, a question under property descriptions. Uh, do, uh, are we going to post the, uh, the zoning changes? Um, they're included in when you look at. We don't need the past zoning changes, right? I mean, the past zoning. If, if you um, turn to the picture, just for instance, look at Seaview. Yeah. And under zoning, it says Contra Costa map now lists property as unaccorded with general plan. Of HE-C housing element consistency. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's the last the last entry 
the last change. Zoning update? The zoning update. Yeah. Okay. So um, so the answer to the question is yes. Good, because I didn't verify it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we're still talking about just the table of contents, maybe we can... We're, yeah, we're talking about table of contents, but I'm showing them where it is. Yes. Yeah. We, we, when we get to that page, we, maybe we can address the specific items that we're seeing on that page. Oh, sure. Okay. Anything else on the table of contents? Okay, please turn to page 10 of 23. And the table continues on page 11, the table of the membership of the committee. So the, and it shows the initial date of the 7-Eleven committee is May 5, 2021. And I believe that thereafter, that, that's when the board was taking applications. And those of us that are holdovers are used to their applications at that point. So the first meeting was um, January 26, 2022. And that's on page 11. We're, we're done with page 10 then? Uh, unless you have something to add. I just want to make sure. Is, you know, with respect to your own entry, is that accurate? Well, close as it can be. Okay. Anyone else? Please check your own entry and see if it's accurate. Okay, then on page 11. Um, Mr. Chair. Yes, ma'am. Are you asking if this was already submitted? So what the agenda packet, I'm assuming everyone's already read it. Are you, when you get to, just be clear, when you get to each page, are you just asking for, are there any suggestions on the page? And then we would move to the next one? Yes. Okay. Thank you. So there are two paragraphs dealing with um, the changes in the composition of the committee and then the the restart of the committee. Um, there's paragraph four, which is the description of the legal process for surplus school property disposition. So that's go back to the table of contents for a moment. So table, so here it shows uh, is the item. So it's just a renumbering. What I noticed when I was working on the file is that if I change the number, they all change. So, so it's just we need to uh, re renumber the table contents to be consistent with page eleven. So, dear, uh, on uh, page eleven, number four, uh, the first sentence is that uh, is that read correct for you? That's that's verbatim what I lifted from the Cupertino Union School District. So this is the paragraph that needs to be re reviewed and revised. You're talking about paragraph says before district property? Yes. Oh, thank you. The board must uh, must first determine that the property is surplus. Isn't that our the committee's job? No. We're advisory. They okay. We propose, they dispose. Very good. We have a slogan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Please don't make bumper stickers. <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Do you have any questions about the language? This, this is the paragraph that will be subject to uh, review by our council. So on page 12, and um, what's listed in the items A through E are simply the various portions of section uh, 17390 of the Ed Code. And then uh, item six is um, the summary, and I think that's. I know I saw it earlier. It's on the web the web page, right? Well, the summary of the seven uh, seven eleven committees work meeting agendas and minutes are included in Appendix A. That's the district web website, yeah. Right. And then it's page twenty two in the back of the book there. That's what they put there. I think it's important that when we put this packet together that we make sure that the agendas that are included are the amended agendas. Okay. okay. Not, not the ones that were published here, the ones that we finally amended, because people are going to wonder, well, I'm not, you know, they said they, they addressed those minutes, and I'm not seeing those minutes in the, in the packet. Well, we voted not to deal with those minutes. So, I mean, we changed the agendas. Okay. But wouldn't that be reflected in the meeting yeah, minute? The minute. That's the minute. Yeah, but you the don't agenda. you don't give a, a set of a, an agenda and expect that they're going to verify what's in the agenda by looking at and comparing all the minutes or the, from the meetings. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it, how sorry? How hard is it to actually include the corrected minutes? Okay, we have a point raised by the parliamentarian, so. I think the point is that the, the agendas are what were posted 72 hours in advance for Brown Act. And what Melissa was saying is if we changed anything on the agenda or if we postponed something, that is, you're correct. That's always reflected in the minutes. Right. Okay. So, this so Mr. Gosney, it seems like we're, we're in a, a bit of a pickle over here because. The change to the agendas, changes to the agendas are in the minutes. I, I understand that. And I, I again, I, I repeat what I said. How hard is it to actually correct the agenda so that what, what the public sees is actually the correct agenda that we worked under on that, at that meeting, as opposed to making them, expecting them to either watch a video or to, to read a set of minutes at a different location. As most, sorry. I keep seeing hands flying up every time I say something that's distracting. Uh, but you know, people aren't going to be looking, especially looking for uh, changes in the agenda when they're reading the minutes. They're going to look at content and yeah, not, not basic uh, you know, uh, form of the meeting itself. As I recall, the change to the agenda is almost at the top of the minutes. Why would they not read it? Well, it, it, you go ahead. Sorry. If I can real quickly, the only thing we're going to publish is the post of agenda. I don't want anybody accusing this committee of revising the agenda, not telling anybody, and publishing that later. The only agenda is going to be part of this and posted. The revisions to the agenda are reflected in the minutes. All right, well, that settles that. Then. Okay. The lawyer spoken says they, they're going to do what they want. No, we're going to do what's right. Good answer. Okay, thank you. Uh, any further comments? Okay, so um, then we have, you know, what's listed here in the property descriptions is consistent with the table that appears below each uh, photograph of the site. So, um, and with the exception of the committee recommendation. We have property description. Oh, here we go. Next page. Sorry, my bad. Three recommendation of priority uses. 
So for the committee's consideration, um, we kind of internally see this two ways. So when you're looking at the draft report and you look at the property description, some people thought it was a good idea to include the committee's recommendation and the priority use on this page so that it's all in one place. But then a couple of other people said, well, aren't you just describing the property? And then you talk about the recommendations later in the report. And so the implementation of that other thought would be that these property description pages, basically that bottom row that has recommendation and priority uses would be deleted. So that in this segment of the report, it would really just reflect the property's description. And then later in the report is where you would see the committee recommendation and priority use. So the, the way that you see it here, it's all on one page because kind of as a committee, right? We use that as kind of a centering thing. We looked at the page, we talked about it when it was all together. Um, another way that it could be is that in section seven, we could delete item seven and eight and delete the bottom row from each property page. So I just wanted to present kind of two different ways to look at it for you guys to consider. Um, different people saw it different ways. And so I just wanted to uplift their recommendations to the group. Do you have any uh, objection to say in the, in the um, box deal with priority uses, see page blank for discussion? Whatever the committee would like to do. That That's why I wanted to just identify you know, okay, we lost our form. Let's just stop. We're just having the discussion. We're not. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking at the attorney here. We're not making any. <laughs> so we're we're, not we're any kind out. of walking a fine line. But if she's just going, she's she's back, back now anyway. There okay. we go. Okay. Um, but if I could ask a question, I just wanted to make sure I was hearing that you're saying with a pointer towards. The other information. So what I heard was maybe leaving that indication there, but sending identifying to the reader that that comes later in the report. Okay. Some people read things very linear in a very linear fashion. Mm -hmm. And so in following the report, they wanted to understand the formation. Here's the group review of the site and then go into the committee's work that led to the committee's recommendations. And so following that linear line at this portion of the report, the committee's recommendation and priority use is kind of it's too soon because it didn't doesn't give a chance to kind of identify that linear function. Um, but then also as a committee to kind of help understand the recommendations, it was kind of helpful to have the centering page and we would pull them a lot up a lot when we had our meeting so people could look at the site, right? And kind of center the, the focus on it. And so I just wanted to uplift to the committee. I heard from some of our team members that looked at it as they said, you know, that's out of order. This isn't linear. You should take that off and you should just be identifying the property description. So delete seven and eight, delete that bottom row that you see on each one because you do that later and you should follow the linear progression of the report. Other people were like, well, we talked about that on that page, kind of just checking in with the team. And so I wanted to present both perspectives to the committee. See, um, under item um, XI, if you will, 11, um, looking at Adams, for instance, you, you would say C item 11A. For, this, for um, further discussion, right? Because under item 11A, it says, the advisory committee recommends the board consider options to utilize the Adams site property consisting of property. And so this is a, a more um, detailed, I want to say literal, but that's not what really I mean, but there's a language that flushes out the idea that open market and workforce housing is a priority of use. So it will 
if one was looking at the photograph along with the listing of parcels and the status of it and everything else, if you will, in a tabular presentation. There's a, a written presentation under 11A and it states much of the same thing, but gives a <clears throat> sentence form. Okay, so okay. Um, I, I have a parallel in mind, but it was Sanjay Gupta wrote a book about how to live a healthy life, and he said, you know, if you have any questions, go read chapter four now, <laughs> which is how, about being active and extending your life. So, um, so this is kind of the same idea. You know, you get to this thing, and you want to. Oh, it says open market workforce housing. And then if it just says see item 11A for discussion. Are you thinking of that for the whole bottom row? Mm -hmm. Com committee recommendation prior to use is colon C 11A or something like that? Um, yeah, the priority uses. Yeah. I think both the recommendation and priority uses are actually what's described in the 11A. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Um, well, I'm sorry. Uh, and I, I just <laughs> and I think along the lines of uh, what Melissa brought up is staying linear to it. Um, I think I like the thought of removing the priority uses. I think it doesn't give enough at at this state, but maybe just leaving um, the committee recommendation of the surplus or. You know, retain because I think on the next on the Harmon Old one it mm -hmm. says retain. Mm -hmm. And I think giving, you know, this is a surplus site, this is but you know, taking out the priority use because I don't think it does much there because it doesn't give enough information, but it you know, this is not what the papers for. But then I think I would, you know, recommend just giving the committee recommendation of it's a surplus or retain and then moving on forward. Without the priority what, uses. What about um, telling the reader to go to read the discussion on page five? But I think that's what the table of. We shouldn't make a decision. Oh, We're going to vote on that next time. Right. I'm listing, as was a recorded request, I'm listing all the recommendations. So you'll have those all for next time. Okay. All right. So like Mr. Dawson, right? I'm sorry, so like, Mr. Dawson. Yeah, so leaving it like I think what I said. That. I just wanted to understand her. So, so that yeah, so I leaving it like page too. fifteen twenty three. Okay. On all with. So it would be a merged line like this. It would just be that page, right? Yeah, it would just be that page. Committee recommendation retained at same bottom line on every other page. Whether it, I mean, all we're adding to it is surplus. Committee recommendation surplus retain and <laughs> taking out the priority usage. I think you know we're gonna give all priority usage and then ask us to go to another page to get more information. I think. Okay. So and I think we have a couple of different options, and maybe I can put together a this or this or this okay. so that we have that for the next meeting. Okay. So that's what I want to capture. Thank you. Mr. Gossage. Um, each one of these four pages on there, uh, I mean, things I would like to see included on there is on the zoning, what the actual zoning number is, whether it's a city zoning number or, or, or a county zoning number or El Cerrito City Council or City Cruzon. Don't just I mean, list it as, uh, you know, list as Parks and Recreation, uh, list as the unincorporated with general plan of HEC. They had they just came up with new numbers on these things, which makes it a little bit easier for people to do some research on themselves. Also, uh, something we we saw for the first couple of years, it seems like, with our committee, we actually had uh, from our, our consultants that did their the real estate stuff, we had a, a, a value added to each one of these plots. Uh, it, it was a range, but I think that's the kind of information that would be of, of interest both to the school board and to the public. You know, if for some reason 
the, the board decides to sell the property, this is what they might get for it. But this would also require them to come up with, after the new zoning, come up with a, a, a an, an adjusted appraisal of the property. We'd asked for that a couple of months ago, and so they really didn't change. I, As I recall, when Ms. Toms was here, she was uh, talking about um, different densities. And I was looking for numbers other than what we got from Terra Realty. Mm -hmm. Because what we got from Terra Realty, it seemed like with the change in the zoning, that the density changed. And I didn't have, and, and there was a range. So we could put in the range in terms of, of housing, but wouldn't that properly belong in the discussion of of um, the disposition of the property in, in the later, in the later. Well, I'm not uh, saying it, it doesn't belong there too, but you're looking at a description of the property right here. Okay. And just adding adding a box on there, or or, or just including the first the R6, wherever that was, uh, for, uh, for yeah, that, uh, yeah. on there, but also on the 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 appraisals of there. Uh, I've got to believe that with the the new. Uh, zoning changes that the appraisal of the property has been changed as well. If you if you're going from Sea View saying you can only have 21 pieces of uh, of homes there to having 90 homes there, as it seems to me that that would make a, a difference in the, the value of the property. But having that kind of information would be right here when you're looking at the the property itself. That would be a useful information to know. Okay. It's been it's been kind of no, dry. I, I I I think your point is well taken. Yeah. I've also I got one question. We don't have that information. Sorry. At the moment, we don't have the information. Yeah. The points well taken. Yeah. Uh, Lewis, maybe you can help me out on on Adams. This came up uh, just uh, with one of these maps. The uh, assessor parcel number changed. So that's I what happened that came out of the research we did. So we had the original presentation to the committee. And there was discussion with the committee after we received supplemental information from Supervisor Joya and Ms. Toms. And so we asked for a re-review and an update. And so that's when that was updated as well as the zoning. So to your earlier question, we did ask legal counsel to review these property descriptions to see if anything was updated and then shared with them that information. And so those updates have been made here. And if I remember correct, it was one APM on Adams mm -hmm. that we, we, we fixed, but I think the rest we confirmed. You're correct on that. I was just wondering why, because when we, we had sat down and had a meeting with Ms. Toms and her associate, they had no idea that this had happened. They had no idea. And also looking at per FATCO, and they had to look up what FATCO was. Uh, if they, if they were just as flummoxed as we were when we met with them. First American question. Title Company? They didn't, know, they didn't know what First American Title Company Well, they didn't know what it applied to here. Uh, okay. Go government people like to use a lot of acronyms. Yeah, that, yeah, this, world of her department uses the same acronyms as his department, but they don't mean the same thing. Uh -huh. Excuse me. Oh, no. I do you have a, a general question. Uh, I agree with uh, Mr. Gosney and uh, his assessment, but my question is, uh, before this is uh, finalized and uh, given to the public for public consumption, will we have a, a new appraisal done on all three properties? I asked, and uh, the feedback I got, the Mr. Freeze, you, you might jump in at this point, because um, the, the opinion of Terra Realty, as reported to me, was no change that the um, the value of the property was undeveloped, if you will. You know, that a developer would pay for the property. It wouldn't, it wouldn't change that much. Now, what does that much mean? Right. I don't know. Are you making that And I think a phrase value is moved with time, right? I mean, yeah. As time goes along. So it would only be as good as the moment the appraiser was actually done. And what we received, I just want to clarify, um, I know sometimes it gets a little technical, but it was an opinion of probable cost. So it, we didn't have a full appraisal done on the property. So what we received was an opinion. And then based on the committee's recommendation and the additional information, we did request that the opinion be updated if the new information changed the opinion. 
And I think to Lewis's point, part of the comment is understanding some of the site encumbrances that exist for these different properties. For example, the fault line at Adams, the flooding um, at Seaview. Mm -hmm. The, the response that we received when we asked if there was an updated opinion of probable cost was that that opinion was not going to change. And so we did follow up on that. That was the response that we did receive. So my second question was, when was that appraisal uh, done? How old is that appraisal? Is it last year, six months old? It would have been, we'd have to go back and check the documents, but it was provided at the last minute. So it's, it's that old then. then maybe yeah. it is in order to have it, uh, the properties reappraised. Well, it's not really an appraisal, it's a realtor's opinion of value. Yeah. If, I, if I can true. briefly, um, <clears throat> the next section you guys are going to discuss talks about the recommendations for the priority of use based on your folks' discussion. One of them is potentially, I think it's the second one going to open market and fair market housing and we give it to the developers. I don't want you guys to have an appraisal right now that's a public document. That's going to be a confidential thing. We get an appraisal, the developer, we get an appraisal, we negotiate and back and forth. You have a, an opinion of the estimated value, somewhat on purpose. An approximation. Yeah. Um, the appraised value may have changed by the zone. I don't know. Um, the opinion from Terra Realty was probably wouldn't make a big impact right now. I don't think I'm going to change my numbers. I would go with that at the moment. If we're doing workforce housing, the is perhaps a little less important because then the district would be taking it on. The value of the property is less important. If you open it to open market, we're going to be negotiated. And then the appraisal becomes something that we try to keep as confidential for as long as we can. So, so I, get, I hesitate getting appraisal today on this property. I'm sorry, yeah. uh, opinions would be the, the proper word that I should have used. Probably, yeah, you got some yeah, you're right opinion. about that. Uh, but those numbers have already been made public, the opinions. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I'm less worried about an opinion from 2022 or 2023, or even 2024 from Terra Realty versus an appraisal who mm -hmm. does comps, compares the things, takes to local zoning, it goes through a true, true appraisal. That's something I'm we're going to want to be careful of. So that that would be a suggestion. I it's going to. Uh, I think. Yeah. None. Okay. <laughs> that, that that under each None. each one of the pages would like that there'd be an approximated uh, value of so and so by Terra Realty, like we had on them on these very same pages in the first couple of years mm -hmm. of this committee. Would it be acceptable that the committee if we dated those? Yes. Okay. Yeah, 2022 opinion of value. Right. Yes. Yeah. Be important. Um, because it, among the, the things that have changed, interest rates are very different from 2022. Mm -hmm. And um, and also the supply yeah. of housing is very different from 2022. Yeah. A lot. Construction costs. Yeah. So, and likely will change again by the time the board acts on this and does anything. Yeah, very likely. It's fluid. <laughs> okay. So, um, so, we are on, are we on Adams? First one? Yes. No? no we I'm sorry, no, we've already got that. Wrong that wrong 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 wrong. Wrong. Yeah, I just have to go from black and white to color in my eyes. Um, okay, so so we're talking about taking out the priority uses and just saying surplus. Um, and moving the opinion of value uh, off this page. You want it on this page? Yes. 2022 opinion of value? Well, whatever. Year it was, yeah. I'm sorry, they, 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 they kept mentioning 2009 in one of the presentations. I just wow, I hope it's not that old, yeah. yeah. That's the type of <laughs> okay. Well, that was verbal, <laughs> verbal type of with respect. Okay, um, any, any other changes in general for the format? Okay, so let's go on to Harmon Knowles and. 
you know, again, we'll have to update the zoning, I suppose. Um, and so what's just, reflected here is what is most up to date. Okay. So then a recommendation is retained. Um, and, and moving on. So I got a question about Harmon Knowles. I'm only seeing one parcel number here. Wasn't it split up into two parcels? I mean, the, the park parcel and the school parcel? No. It's one parcel and the line that was drawn, the line that was drawn was drawn by the realtors. The focus was on the school property. This focus was on the school property. And I think it indicated what one third of the property was being occupied by the park. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I have to go back and double check. Okay. We are on 16.3, the part of our site. Um, changes? Yeah. I, do, I do have a question. Though. What? Uh, we still haven't figured out how much uh, property that the uh, UC gardeners would like to retain if they can. All of it, I think they said. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Right? Well, that's good. That whole, right? <laughs> yeah. That'd be just fun. Uh, uh, we we do have a uh, we do have a uh, main idea of uh, reforestation in the bottom part because it's, it's a very dumb. The middle part is where we have the most done. The the lower part is where we started to regenerate the soil. Sure. Um, Mr. Gosling, when I was out there for the for the site visit and we measured. The spot that, or the area that uh, we, I was I was told that's what we're looking for. Uh, it was right about half an acre. Uh, currently occupied, correct? Well, it, not just currently occupied, but it, it, this, this is what we hope to have. Kind of thing. We, it, okay. we can't have it all. I, I, I got corrected. That, that's what we, the minimum we hope to have, because that's the, the place where we can actually put a greenhouse. Um, that's we a greenhouse is where we grow our seedlings that we make we grow the earth our tomato for our tomato cell and that's our main fundraising so we can expand the program throughout the community and also we like to have the regular educational mm -hmm. programs and so we like to have a place where we can teach people and teach them and mold them so and well and grow food and we like to grow food for the community uh, well, it's it's in there. I'd rather, if you start specifying how much square footage or acreage you want, then a value is going to be imputed to that. Correct. And then, um, and then we're talking about a gift of funds from the district to the garden, the master gardener program. Um, or a sale. Yeah. Or a sale. That's, that's sale. the board's discretion, though. Yes, it is. A question just on the current use, because I know we have it as a vacant property. So we are not attaching that the master's program is using on the property. It's using what again? On the portless side, right? Yeah, yeah. You didn't understand the question. I said, are we adding that there is usage? Because I know, like, we're, used, we're stating what. The current uses, and it's currently being occupied by the UC Master Gardens. Yeah, the UC Master Gardens program, which doesn't. It's not so that, that was part of the reflect. I mean, the, so okay. So the under, priority uses. Under the current use, rather the current than vacant, use. you would rather have a, a notation that is vacant, that, with acres. the exception of one half acre occupied by UC Master program. Yeah, I think that means. Yeah, that would be appropriate. It's yeah, correct use. Instead of just saying it's an empty lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, 
Any other changes? Okay, moving on. The stadium. Um, there's not a notation about blood flow. And Mr. Gosney, you spoke to how easily that can be cured, right? Yes. <laughs> you got a buddy, you can fix anything. And the bail trail is not there. But okay. one of my concerns, too, I'm sorry, under priority uses, here where it says, Open market and, and workforce employee housing with an easement to permit East Bay Regional Park Districts to connect parts of the Bay Trail. It's we we didn't say recommend that they do it; they consider it. Is everything depends upon? Would you like with consideration of an easement instead of an with an easement? Yes. But, uh, I thought on my last recommendation, I recommended that the priority usage okay. and be taken off from every page going forward. Well, the, we can on the incorporate Adam. the language into the later discussion. If it's taken off, right enough again. Can you say that again? Yeah, I said I think I recommended earlier on that on these pages, the four pages that we're looking over, all the priority uses be removed mm -hmm. from each sheet. Right. So the language in the later discussion would add that. Um, consideration be given to the East Bay Regional Park District for an easement to connect parts of the Bay Trail. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so to clarify, thank you, that was really helpful. Um, the recommendation to remove it later in the report, that language repeats. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking the notes on the recommendations for the language so that I can reflect it in the later part of the report. I think that's what you just kind of. Mm -hmm. So this would be moved to section 11. Next slide. Yeah, that, that's, that's the note that I'm taking. Okay. That's your linear. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, it's 10 minutes to eight and on the agenda, for today, um, back to the agenda, was E1, which is an action item for setting uh, dates for public hearings. And I suppose this should be postponed um to our meeting on july 16th we asked the staff how much time do you need to schedule these public meetings and get newspaper or advertisements out and everything I mean, if we wait till july 16th that's going to really pushes that out to the middle of august for the first one you got four meetings so we have three days so the newspaper requires three days to make a public notice and then the public hearing would run in the paper and the date of the publication of the public hearing in the paper needs to be at least 10 days prior to the public notice hearing. So if we took a calendar and said, for example, let's say that the draft report was approved by the committee at the uh, July 16th meeting, I could issue the notice to the paper first thing the next morning. The public notice could run on Saturday, July 20th. And when we add 10 days to that, the public hearing could take place anytime after July 31st. So now, but we, oh, I'm so sorry. Let me, can I just add this really quickly? In the public notice, we have to have the, this is the date, time and location of the public hearing. So at that July 16th meeting, it would have to be approval of the draft report as well as the locations and times of the meeting. So through the chair, uh, what is the name of the newspaper, first of all? 
Uh, it's the um, East Bay Times, and so it would be in the West County Times. Okay, and then uh, the, most cities are up for recess in August, during August, so uh, any type of public uh, attendance might be low. Uh, because, uh, because what I'm getting at is that I'm, I, I'm the chair of the RNCC, and we could actually publicize this through to all the neighborhood councils throughout the city of Richmond. And, and that would be fabulous. But that would be in September when we would be able to do that. When you would so, be able to send the email? Yeah, because the city's out for, I mean, the city's out for recess in August. Well, the city council is out. Well, the city council, yeah. The rest of the city's not shut down, though, is it? No. Neither is Radio Free Richmond, right? No, we're not shut down. We never close. Uh, but, 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 no, I, I understand what you're, you're saying here, but I, I think that the, the city, can, I mean, or the RNCC, you, you still have your, your neighborhood council meetings yeah. in, in August. Yeah, I can and, generate and anything that you mm -hmm. produce, but uh, I'm just wondering if September is a better time for to get more people rather than trying to do it in August, if that's what you're looking at. What I would say is that school starts in August, and so a lot of families are back in August. So I know for my family on the East Coast, if you talk to them about anything before Labor Day, they're like, uh, there's no way that'll happen. Um, the teachers come back, our schools are back, our first day of school is mid-August. And so um, that's just one perspective that I would offer is I think um, a lot of our community is definitely re-engaged. I would say July is one of those months, right? That's a month where we only have one board meeting for our board. Um, typically every other month we have two. Um, but in August, I would say just from a district perspective, there's definitely that re-engagement in August. Um, because as a committee, we still have to fix our, our minutes and uh, we have a lot to do before we go to the public, right? <clears throat> um, <laughs> the minutes feel like the stone that Sisyphus is pushing on the line. <laughs> um, so I'm just wondering if August is uh, too ambitious or if it could be done from a committee standpoint. Well, you know, initially we started out with saying what sort of lead time do we need for the meetings and so forth. Um, and it looked like Looks like at least two weeks from the time we adopt a draft report to the time we start with the meetings. The first one. The first one. Yeah. Um, so, I, su I suppose that um, rather than trying to ice the meetings, the meeting dates, and put the burden, because we still have several pages in this thing to go through, plus whatever it's adding, plus the minute that we mentioned. <clears throat> so perhaps it would be wise to just anticipate September rather than August. As a teacher, I'm going to tell you, um, we started mid-August, at the secondary level, we reconstitute after Labor Day because there's balancing of classes and all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you, you discover that in the school, those students that you had on Friday were not the students you have on Monday. And they discover that too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so there's all kinds of politics that goes on as to who's teacher they want and everything else. Um, if, I think we can still meet on the 16th and try and wrap this thing. And then I guess uh, we'll sit down and review the meetings and generate something of minutes. This time, we're not so, taking action. Well, well, it's an it's, it is an action on it. It is an action, so I'm asking, are you asking for no objections to postpone this to the next meeting? And I'm talking about E1. E1. Yeah, sure. Um, um, anyone want to make a? You can tell uh, if there's no objections. If there are no objections, we'll we'll, we'll postpone this until the next the setting of these dates for the hearings until the next meeting. 
Mm -hmm. Hearing none, the motion is approved to move item E1 to 716. And we are within one minute of our closing time. So um, I would like to um, uh, move uh, pages, the review of pages 18 through 23. July 16th. We're at the end of our meeting time. It's eight o'clock. We don't have anything posted that says that our meeting. And, and I don't want staff to start throwing things at me. Um, but it just says our meeting's at six. We have a customer ending at eight, but there's no rule that says we have to. Yeah. Would you like to extend the time? We don't get to extend the time. So, we just keep going until you're either done or someone makes a motion to adjourn. Mr. Gosling? I'd rather not extend. I, mean, I, I know that. I mean, I, Is that a motion? No. It, you need a motion to extend, not, not, not to extend. I'm sorry. Uh, because we do not have an end. If we we're taking too much of our time discussing whether it's a motion or not. Then All I say is I'd, I'd rather get on with the other meetings I've got. We've got a city council meeting going on right now. Perfect. Yeah, that's where I came from. That's right. Hope it went well. We have proclamation. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. We got we got it with the paparazzi with their possibility. We're all on topic. So um, I'd like to uh, call a meeting to a close. It's eight o'clock. I have dinner waiting for them. So my own self interest is to go home and have dinner. Sometimes it's sometimes it's got to be.